Hey, welcome back everybody. Great to see you out there on this Wednesday. Hope we're all having a wonderful day so far and we've got a good bit to talk about today in the winter weather department as we have ongoing snow showers for many folks today. Uh, and that's really going to set the tone from now for really, I think, at least the next couple of weeks as we really start to lock into uh, this more wintry pattern through much of the eastern half of the country. Uh, I do also want to say here at the beginning of the video, thank you. We did hit uh, 5,000 subscribers yesterday. In fact, we actually overshot it by a good bit, uh, which is super awesome to see. And uh, honestly, if you would have told me at the first of this month that we'd be at 5,000 uh, before 2024, I probably would have called you crazy. Um, so again, really thanks to all of you who have jumped aboard, means a lot. Uh, and if you haven't already jumped aboard, definitely consider doing so. We're uh, really growing at a fast pace here and uh, really super exciting times. Uh, also, if you are new, comment, let me know where you're watching from and what you're seeing out there. And make sure to like the video if you like it and uh, share it with somebody who you think might find the video interesting. With all that said though, let's go ahead and jump on into your forecast. Now, uh, taking a look at Water Vapor Loop, it's pretty a mesmerizing picture, honestly, this morning. You can see this upper level low very clearly on satellite, uh, almost like a cinnamon bun here, shaped with uh, all this dry air being ingested into it. And as that dry air is being ingested in, we've got very strong southerly flow here over the southern states. Uh, and also very strong flow kind of coming back on the other side, kind of into the northeast. And that's why we're still seeing very rainy conditions this morning through much of the mid-Atlantic and northeastern part of the country. And that will continue throughout much of today while we're dealing with nicer weather, although a bit colder and snowier over this upper level low itself. Um, so that's kind of the general idea of what we're going to see throughout today. Now, taking a look at current watches, advisories, warnings, and radar imagery, again, it's still quite rainy in the east. Look at this big plume of moisture from uh, really about Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, getting all the way up the I-95 corridor towards New York City, Albany, Boston, getting in on some of that rain this morning. Uh, and again, this entire shield of rain is going to continue to pull northward. Uh, the good news, though, if you're a fan of winter weather, maybe not so much the rainy side of things, uh, I think after this rain moves on through, uh, that colder air is going to funnel in, and we do have a shot at some snow in parts of the northeast here uh, going through the next couple of days. And if that snow doesn't pan out for you, well, don't get your hopes down because, again, I think going into that first week or two of January, uh, a lot of folks are in for a really nice pattern for some snowy weather. And we'll take a look at that a little more in depth here later on in the video. Now, outside of that snow, or excuse me, outside of that rain in the east, all of this kind of falling here from St. Louis towards Kansas City and back towards central Illinois uh, is likely falling as some snow this morning. Maybe some rain as well for some folks. If you're watching this part of the country, uh, definitely let me know what you're seeing out there. But uh, definitely seeing some snow showers here mixing in through much of Missouri and Illinois this morning as we've been talking about. And same story back here towards Nebraska and northwestern Kansas as well as this big upper level low continues to spin away and uh, have enough lift to kind of cause some rain and snow showers. Alrighty, so going ahead and uh, breaking this down a little more for you. Again, this is kind of what we're seeing out there right now, this big plume of moisture uh, in the eastern half of the country. Our models are handling that pretty well. And they're also handling this kind of uh, rain and snow falling over much of Missouri and Illinois this morning. Uh, now, as I move this ahead further into this afternoon, <clears throat> expect this rain shield again to continue to work up the I-95 corridor. By the time we're getting into, uh, into about 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon and evening, still very rainy conditions from D.C. back towards Pittsburgh State College, and uh, likely uh, still raining, although maybe a bit more scattered further up 95 towards uh, New York City and uh, through much of Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. Now, as that rain is moving off to the north and east in, uh, well, the northeast, uh, we are going to see those snow showers to uh, continue to break out over much of Missouri later on this afternoon and evening. And as I bring this further ahead into time, uh, by the time we're getting into about midnight tonight, again, still very rainy in the northeast, uh, but here comes those rain and snow showers now slowly working their way off towards the south and east. Uh, now, what you'll notice here is this piece of energy in the center isn't necessarily going to immediately dive off to the south and east. Um, thanks to this big upper level low, we have mul uh, multiple short waves or just kind of kinks in the flow here. Uh, and those are going to form more areas of kind of embedded low pressure here on the outside that then dive southward. Uh, so that makes for a very complicated forecast here. It's very tough to forecast these short waves, but I do still feel confident we're going to likely get some rain and snow showers through much of the deep south here. And uh, this is going into 
uh, overnight tomorrow night. Watch this piece of energy come out of the Great Lakes and kind of dive down southward uh, into sections of Illinois and Indiana. And I think this is when those snow showers will be most widespread as this piece of energy then begins to dive south towards uh, Kentucky, uh, sections of Tennessee, and maybe even northern Alabama and Georgia getting in on some of those flurries and snow showers. Now, again, this is um, overnight Thursday, Thursday evening. As uh, we hit this time, we're also going to begin to dry out a little bit in the northeast. Uh, but as we're drying out, we're going to kind of get a secondary area of low pressure to form up here and ride up the coast a little bit. And as that is happening, cold air is going to slowly funnel in, and that is going to lead to some wintry precipitation up here into sections of Maine, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Uh, and in fact, we can't even rule out some pretty big time ice totals. I'm getting a little concerned about that, and I'll show you those ice totals here in just a moment as we get later on into the video. Now, as far out as this model goes into our Friday afternoon, uh, you'll notice that rain and precipitation continuing to work up into the northeast, and as it does, um, here is some of those kind of wintry colors showing up. Notice these blues and pinks indicating snow and ice falling, uh, I think through much of Maine here going into our Friday morning. And we'll definitely have to watch the trends on that because ice is not something you want to deal with here. Um, and again, like I said, we'll continue to monitor you know, how that's uh, going one way or the other. But uh, definitely worried about that. And again, I'll show you totals here in just a moment. Now, also Friday morning and into Friday afternoon, this is when we have the best shot at some of those snow showers. Again, through much of the Ohio River Valley from uh, Kentucky, southern Indiana, Illinois, uh, sections of southeastern Missouri, and then down into Tennessee as we're going throughout the day Friday and into the evening hours. Uh, now, this is as far out as our model goes, so we're going to go ahead and switch on over back to our global models here and kind of continue to time out this storm system. All right, latest GFS model. This is Friday morning here. Again, you'll notice these widespread snow showers, maybe some rain mixing in there as well through uh, much of the places we just talked about from Missouri down through Tennessee. And also that leftover precipitation in the northeast as cold air is trying to work on in at the same time. So moving this into our Friday afternoon on the latest GFS model, you'll notice again, look at this uh, well-defined kind of trough showing up, indicating that cold air coming southward out of Canada as kind of uh, another piece of energy in Canada merges with our upper level low, uh, connecting the two and really supplying us with some chilly air here to end out 2023. Again, Friday afternoon, this is when we'll see some of those snow accumulations here. I think in the higher terrains of North Carolina, the Virginias, maybe even the Cumberland Plateau of Tennessee, I think could win here a little bit. Outside of there, though, it's going to be more of a flurry, kind of scattered snow shower situation um, for much of central and eastern Tennessee, much of Kentucky, and for extreme northern Alabama and Georgia. Uh, so that's kind of the general latest thinking there. Now, also latest GFS model, by the time we're getting into overnight Friday and into early Saturday, look at this snow breaking out up in Maine. Um, we'll um, continue to watch it. Again, the GFS here showing snow. The European, I'll show in a second, is a little more icy, and that's something we got to watch for. Uh, but again, as I talked about earlier, here's that secondary low pressure developing, bringing that snow up into sections of the Northeast for our uh, overnight Friday, early Saturday. And then as that thing's pulling away, could even get some lake effect snow there on the backside going into Saturday afternoon and Sunday. All right, now taking a look at the European model and kind of uh, seeing what it's showing here. Uh, again, uh, starting Friday morning, widespread uh, snow showers with some rain mixing in here through much of Missouri, Illinois, uh, Kentucky, and also at the same time, the European model is a bit earlier with that low pressure in the Northeast. Uh, so I'm gonna actually back this up just a little bit. Uh, here's that low pressure forming overnight Thursday into early Friday off the southern New England coastline. And as it moves upward, uh, enough cold air, but it's more shallow at the surface. And we're getting ice here through much of Maine with some snow, uh, especially there kind of closer towards the Canadian border on the northern side of Maine. Uh, and that continues through all day Friday on the latest European, as well as those rain and snow showers through uh, the Ohio and Tennessee River Valley before both of these systems kind of clear on out. Um, going into our uh, Saturday afternoon, evening, and into our Sunday with some lake effect snow showers on the back to watch out for. All right, quickly, uh, very quickly, rainfall totals. Uh, again, most of the rain still to come is going to be in the northeast and northern mid-Atlantic, upwards of an inch or two, especially along the I-95 corridor likely. So watch out for some flooding up there. But luckily, we're kind of on the tail end of all of this rain we've seen the last couple of days. All right, snowfall totals. 
Um, again, this is all just talking about this first system. We'll talk about um, you know the long range here in just a moment and what we could see there. Uh, but again, the biggest winters are going to be through southern Iowa and I think much of Missouri where one to three inches of snow is going to be quite likely. Uh, another area with some big winters, I think the higher terrains of West Virginia, one to three inches is quite likely. Uh, higher terrains of North Carolina, about an inch of snow. And likely, same story here through the Cumberland Plateau, I think about an inch of snow is going to be pretty easy to come by by the time we're getting uh, well into this weekend. Now, outside of there, through much of Kentucky, southern Ohio, uh, southern Indiana, kind of right here in the Ohio River Valley, I think a dusting with isolated spots getting upwards of an inch, just depending who's lucky enough to get uh, most of those snow showers to move through. Again, it's like forecasting rain showers. Not everybody's going to get the same amount. Uh, some will get a little more, some will get a little less, but I think a dusting to a half an inch is a good average there through much of Kentucky. And if you're watching in uh, northern Alabama, northern Georgia, or kind of the lower terrains here of central Tennessee, um, I think flurries to a dusting is a little bit more likely down that area. All right, northeast, again, most of the wintry precipitation we see, I think, is going to be up here into Maine, uh, where depending on those temperature profiles, whether it's ice or snow, is going to play a big factor in these totals. Uh, but a couple inches of snow is not out of the question, should uh, this be more of a snow event compared to an ice event. And then also same story with some back-end lake effect snow showers going later on into this weekend through much of New York State, Pennsylvania, Vermont, New Hampshire, and even Western, Ma uh, Western Massachusetts uh, potentially getting in on some of those snowfall totals. Now ice, again, I am a little concerned about ice here. This is something we gotta watch out for. Um, snow is one thing, ice is completely different. So central Maine here is the biggest corridor on our blend of models, and even if you're watching there in parts of Canada, we could be seeing some ice out of the storm, so be careful out there. Again, this would likely be as early as uh, overnight Thursday into our Friday, and could even linger into Saturday a little bit. Luckily, total's not off the charts here, but as we get closer, this very easily could uh, trend upwards, and we'll be watching that as we get, uh, again, closer to this event, which I know we're super close already, but unfortunately the model is just having a really tough time uh, with some of these pieces of energy. All right, um, so let's kind of talk about the long range a little bit. That's this first storm that we're dealing with. We've got a couple other storms on the horizon that could be even more interesting than these uh, here kind of in the winter weather department. So uh, I'll take a look at our latest European ensemble forecasts. Uh, this kind of big blob you're seeing on your map, this big blue area, that's that upper level low that we've been talking about that's going to bring some of those snow showers uh, relatively far south over the next couple of days. Uh, now, that is eventually going to pull off and again kind of ride through the northeast, allowing that secondary area of low pressure to form and work on out as well. Now that entire trough is going to leave and set in place some cold air. As it does though, we're going to get another trough. You'll notice kind of this kinking in the flow up here and a trough axis showing up on the Euro Ensemble members uh, up towards Iowa and Illinois. And eventually that dives south through the uh, Ohio River Valley into the mid-Atlantic through the southeast and also eventually exits out. That storm could bring some snow and I'll show you that map here in just a moment. And again, timing on that would be just in time for New Year's Day and the couple days after. Now after that one, here comes another one, another trough, another area of blue to watch for, and this one really has my attention as well. Uh, this is a very kind of conducive track here, uh, right through the southern tier of the country, and at this point, we've already had multiple shots of cold air into the east, so there could be lingering cold air, and also look at this blue up to the north. This is kind of connecting now with that southern piece, and we easily could see some phasing here. Uh, this is still about 10 days away, so we're still just looking for the pattern. This is the pattern there, and right now the pattern is there, and right after that, another storm system coming to the south that could potentially tap into this cold air up north. Um, so if you get kind of whiffed over the next couple of storms, uh, don't let your you know hopes get too far down, because I think January is still going to be a very good month for a lot of folks here in the winter weather department. All right, talking about temperatures here very quickly. Again, it's still warm in the east. That's going to change though through our Thursday. You'll notice this is Thursday afternoon. Those blues working back in. By the time we get to Friday afternoon, even more blue on the map. And that blue really locks in to end the new year here. And another shot of that cold air with that secondary trough just in time for the first or second of January. So again, the cold air is getting kind of established here. And in the long run, it looks to continue to kind of 
you know, get uh, funneled in through Canada. And by the time we're looking 10 days away with that active southern storm track, look at all of this cold air in place over the eastern half of the country to help try to supply a snowstorm or two. All right, now I'm talking about those snow chances. Again, this is the chance of a snow or snow totals above at least an inch here um, with our GFS ensemble members. Uh, this kind of uh, what you're seeing on your map in the central part of the country, that's what we're seeing right now. You'll notice going into uh, this kind of Saturday, Friday uh, time frame, again, we've got a good shot of some snow here over the Ohio River Valley, and uh, we've already talked about that, but just to kind of back it up here, uh, there's that, and then that moves up towards Maine where we once again get kind of some chance of snow here as well, as we already talked about this weekend. Now after that, again, here comes that secondary storm system, another kind of bigger area of um, unsettled weather with a chance to produce some snowfall just in time for the new year. This up near the Great Lakes with that next trough through section, uh, sections of the Appalachia chain as well as uh, kind of in portions of the northeast as well as uh, maybe parts of the Ohio River Valley can't roll out some flakes with this next storm system. Uh, so then that one swings on through, again, establishing the cold air. And then as we get about 10 days away, here comes another storm system um, showing once again the probabilities increasing of maybe some snowfall here. Uh, just a matter of where is what we still got to nail down here as we continue to kind of time this out. And uh, after that, again, we just get more and more rounds of this chance of uh, winter storms kind of riding through the southern tier of the country and up the east coast. So we're going to continue to monitor that uh, here as we end 2023 and really, again, those first couple weeks of 2024, I think could be very active for a lot of folks. Uh, with that said, though, again, hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday out there and I'll see you all tomorrow.